Hi Between the Chapters Book Club, Admin LJ here, also known as Admin Lauren. Once again, coming to you with another live Q&A, live chat with a very special guest. If you joined us last week, you already heard me talking a little bit about her. Uh, we are going to be chatting with Lisa Jackson, author of The Girl Who Survived. Lisa is a New York Times, USA Today bestselling author. She has been at this for a very long time, has countless books. I am so excited to have this chat with her. Some of you may know if you were around for our admin author, or sorry, admin live Q&A, Ask Us Anything Happy Hour that we had a couple of weeks ago. You may have heard this story already, but I have to share it again. My mom, who actually gave me my love of books, is the first one that introduced me to Lisa Jackson when I was probably in the third or fourth grade. It's probably a little too young to be reading Lisa Jackson at the time, but that is one of the first instances where I read her work. I've been in love with her since then. She was one of my mom's favorite authors, one of my favorite authors growing up. So I've been super lucky to get to work with her for the last few years. It's a full circle moment. So I always feel really honored and blessed to get to say that. It's a, it's a special little treat for me. So anyways, I'm super looking forward to this chat. I've talked with Lisa in the past. She's always a really fun person to talk to. And like I said, if you were around for last week's chat with Nancy Bush, who for anyone who doesn't know is Lisa's sister, they have some crazy stories and some crazy experiences. So I'm sure we will hear plenty more tonight. And I, I promise one of these days, I'm gonna get both of them on screen for our book club and we will have a blast. So don't worry, I'm working on it, everyone. Anyways, like always, if you have a question for Lisa or you wanna chat with us during the half hour, please leave those comments down in the comment section. I will be hanging out. One of my fellow admins will also be hanging out in the comment section during the half hour. If you leave us a question during the next 30 minutes, you will be entered to win a flash giveaway. I'm going to give you a really fun suspense novel that is not out yet. I promise you're going to love it. It may or may not show up in our book club in the coming months. Just a little hint. So if you want to get in on the ground floor and get a copy of this special book early, leave a comment and leave a question for our special guest. So like always, you're not here to chat with me. You're here to chat with our guest. So I'm going to bring Lisa Jackson on screen now. Please join me in welcoming her to our book club. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, hi. Thanks for having me. I hope I can live up to the intro. You always do. Don't, don't even fret about that. I always have a good time when I get to talk to you. So Thank you so much for making time to join our book club and to join us for a little bit. I know you have a crazy busy schedule, so we're super appreciative of that. Um, I talked a little bit about you and your background, and I did mention The Girl Who Survived. Would you, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and just a little bit about your most recent book? Well, the most recent one out is The Girl Who Survived. Yes. A little bit about me is I've been doing this for a long time. I I think I keep track of it by the age of my youngest son. I think he was two and he mm -hmm. is now 42. So I've been doing this for 40 years. That's kind of amazing. Right. His whole life. Um, and uh, I did it with my sister. She's the one who suggested we get into romance writing at the time. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was a in the early 80s, a big boom. So we got into it, never had read a romance novel in our lives. We've always been mystery buffs mm -hmm. and suspense. Started out on like Nancy Drew. So that's how we got started. And our careers have got, I'd like to say just like, you know, straight up, but eh, no, a little bit more up and down. Right. And The Girl Who Survived is uh, a book that when you're a writer, books come to you in different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the editor suggests something, something you hear, whatever. But the girl who survived, I always had this nagging character of a girl who was locked away in a closet when a horrible disaster happened to her family. And she was locked away for her own good, but not told why. So that was the premise of the story. And then I thought, well, what would happen to her and what would happen 
if she found out that everything she believed as a uh, whatever six seven eight year old turned upside down when she's an adult so that's that was the start of the girl who survived and it's been years that that girl has been nagging at my head and i'd play around with it then i'd go and do a montoya bands or do a, a savannah series or a Mon, uh, montana series and but she was always just always just right there saying what about me what about me so right. eventually the story came and that's what the girl who survived is and uh, quick fact it was called locked away for a long time until my editor changed the title so don't look for locked away look for the girl who survived yes i i gotta say i mean i do like the title locked away but i i think your editor did hit the nail on the head the girl who survived is like a really you got to know what did she survive what happened so yeah, no he came up with that and i said yeah that's better your your titles are always better and this one sometimes the titles don't i can't connect the title with the book even as the author mm -hmm. but this one is definitely all about the girl who survived um you mentioned that sometimes the books just kind of come to you a little bit or someone says something and it kind of pops something in your head I am really curious because for me, when I read this book, and I know my team, we all talked about this quite a bit, is there is quite a bit of an element of the final girl. You know, has she had one of the taglines that everyone has been using is, has she had her final chance to be the final girl? And that's very much an 80s movie, 80s horror movie trope. And I'm curious if like that ever came into play, if you were ever a fan of those 80s horror movies. Well, uh, movies in the 80s and me, that was it. My kids were little, it was an escape. But no, the whole Final Girl thing, I finally read, is it Final Girl or Final Girls, whatever, recently. And so, no, that mm -hmm. was all everybody else. I never thought of it that way. Um, I guess I could with this story, but I always thought of it as the little kid who survived the disaster. Mm -hmm. Not quite as cool of, <laughs> of a little meme, but that's what it is. Right. No, I think that's perfect. I'm just curious. Like, I, I think I've said it to you, and I know I've said it to a lot of our thriller authors, but I'm very much a big scaredy cat. So as soon as I think your editor was the one that first said, oh, it's got a little bit of an 80s horror vibe. I was like, oh, no, am I going to have to watch 80s horror movies? I don't know <laughs> if I can do it. <laughs> So I'm always just curious where the inspirations come from. Um, so I'm trying to read my screen and talk at the same time. And of course, my contacts aren't working today. So everyone bear with me for just a second. Um, all right, perfect. So one reader question is, how did publishing your first book change for you? And have you changed your writing process since that first book? Well, that's a good question. Um... Well, it changed my life because at the time I was babysitting. So yeah, I'd rather write. I'd always had kind of a bend for writing, but I had little kids and had to, you know, we were, we were struggling financially. And so I didn't want to go to work. I had worked in banking before. And so uh, it changed my life in a, in a very big way because I was mm -hmm. able to, once I sold and cottoned on to what to do with writing a romance series at this time, they're called, um, you know, they're all romance in a series, so they're pretty standard. Uh, the plots are different, the characters are different, but there's a sameness to them. And once I cottoned onto that, then I started writing a lot and I was lucky enough to sell. And so uh, that's how I got started and it changed my life. And I write differently, obviously. Well, hey, I started out on a typewriter, a manual typewriter, so that's different. I had to have all of these research book books at my fingertips now i google so right. uh, uh the the whole um internet and uh everything digitally and uh the uh communication access has really made a, a difference and i did learn how to write i always write a synopsis first of the book mm -hmm. so for me it works because i know i have a beginning middle and end I have a lot of beginnings of books, a lot of them. Right. But they don't hang together. <laughs> I, 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 rather than write the whole book and think, oh, this isn't working. What am I going to do? 
I do it in synopsis form, mm -hmm. and that way I can see the big problems usually as I before I actually sit down and write. So that's the major difference from when I first started. That's great. You actually led really well into another reader question I just saw pop up was whether or not you are a plotter or a pantser as you write. So it sounds like you're a little mix of both that you do like to have some kind of structure before you get started. A plotter or a what? A pantser. So you just kind of go with the flow. A pants? Oh, by the seat of your pants. Okay. Yes. I didn't. I thought I was thinking of prancer. I thought, what is that? Okay. Got it. Um, I think I'm a pantser when I write the mm -hmm. synopsis. When I write the book, I try to stay as close to the synopsis as I can, because if I don't, I do just go off on wild tangents. And I think that's really important. Um, I have friends who write down every chapter, every scene before mm -hmm. they actually write it. I can't do that because every once in a while I'm writing and I think, oh, what if that happened? I can't remember which right. book it was, but there was a somebody crawling around in the catacombs of a cathedral and they they used the cell phone. Cell phones were new at the time and then it rang right there. And, I, and that wasn't in the outline. I thought, oh, I've got to have that. I've got to make that work. So it's a it's a mix with me. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I honestly, if I ever had the ability or focus to write, I think that's what I would do too. Um, I did really, I had to laugh. You said you have all the beginnings of all these stories. I'm the exact opposite. I know the endings of so many stories in my brain that I would love to tell. And then it's, oh, but that beginning and middle part, nothing Whoa. So. Oh, no. the, the ending is the tough part tying those all those strings together i well especially for you as a mystery suspense writer i would think that that would be one of the most difficult parts of writing unless there's something else to it that you find really tricky well just recently i had turned in a book and the editor said well kind of ended fast and you know as i wrote it i thought oh well i'm done according to this according to synopsis and I'd written a nice pro e epilogue and everything. But what I had failed to do, it was all there, except I hadn't told the reader what had happened to A, B, C, D characters. <laughs> so now when I, and that was, Oh, a few years ago. So mm -hmm. now at the end of a book, I think, okay, let's go through this character list. Did we tell everybody what happened to all these people so that I make sure that I don't have any loose people wandering around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine that that's probably pretty tricky, especially I mean, if anyone's not familiar with your work, you do have quite a few characters woven throughout your books. So it's not just one or two people you're keeping track of. No, and I have this need to name them all. <laughs> and and that, that gets me in trouble too, but it, <laughs> yeah. they just seem to have to have names. I um, mean, I think it's pretty important, so I don't blame you. Well, yeah, but like the waitress or the school bus driver or what, but they have to have names for me. I Yeah, no, you're just giving them some agency. I, I understand. <laughs> All right, well, we have a couple more reader questions, so I want to make sure okay. we get to them. Um, one reader is curious, do you have any pub day traditions? So anything you do to celebrate a big book release? You know, no. Uh, when I used to be when either Nancy or and I sold a book, we'd go, mm -hmm. we'd take the husbands out to dinner. But that was a million years ago. And no, uh, the pub dates, um, and I think I have a lot of reissues. So mm -hmm. I think that the pub dates get a little bit shuffled out of my mind. Right. And, and this sounds well, maybe it doesn't sound weird, but when I'm done with a book, I am done. I am right. done. Talking today, I thought, okay, better get a copy of that book because <laughs> I don't remember anybody. I had uh, right. my editor say something about a book that he'd read of mine. And he said, so what happened with, I found what the character was, Sheila. And I said, who's Sheila? Who are you talking <laughs> about? And then I thought, oh, he's talking about the book. Was there a Sheila? So there... Is that just an 
an age thing or a t so many book things. But once yeah. then, if I start to read the book again, I'm there mm -hmm. and all the characters come back. Right. But right, they're, they're pretty nebulous right now. Yeah, well, I was about to say, I think with as many stories as you have told over the years, it would probably get pretty chaotic in your head if you could remember every intricate detail of every single book. I think it's probably healthiest for you to just let them go out into the world once you're done with them. Well, especially the single titles, because right. I have to keep track of the series people mm -hmm. and uh, when they had a baby, <laughs> how old that kid would be now, what year right. would be. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot of timelines to keep track of because right. I know I know your readers because I am one of your readers. There are some eagle-eyed people out there oh, and they will oh, catch yeah. up on things. <laughs> so oh, yeah, they'll, which, and they'll let me know, which is good because then yes. I can change it before it goes out in another edition. Right. Um, that's perfect. Uh, another reader question. This one may be a little difficult since we did just say that you kind of let let um, books go once you once you've written oh, them oh no but okay has there ever been a character that you would say is the hardest character you had to write it doesn't have to be this book it could be any book any character of yours that just truly gave you trouble well no but for example mm -hmm. I'm writing, I'm trying to write an idea now, and it, I've been writing it on and off since the start of this pandemic. It's another one that has been biting right. at me. And several of the characters are wonderful, and I love them, and I want to write them. And this third woman, who's integral to the plot, I really like her, but I don't get her yet. You have to get her. I don't right. get her. Once I get her and get what she wants, and why she wants it and what happened to her, I'll be ready for the races. But I might have to set it aside again and let her stew till the time when I think, well, come on, that's what happened. You know that. But it's right. it's I can't find it yet. It's it's in there somewhere, I think. I've It'll been watching a lot of Dateline hoping to get a clue, but it hasn't worked yet. Well, I was, that is one of the things that I was curious about is if you watch true crime or these like investigative shows and things like that. Um, so you're a Dateline fan. Do you watch anything else? I go through periods of watching forensic files. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot of forensics that way. Right. And I watch Dateline and there's several different uh, types of that. And then I watch, um, fictional mm -hmm. uh, scary stuff too, um, uh, serious stuff. And uh, like we just finished Severance. I want to watch okay. that again. It, it took a while to get it going and I thought, oh, I don't know. And then, oh man, I'm hooked. So yeah, uh, I, I, I do the real stuff and then, the, um, then I do a lot of reading. I try not to read people who write write as much like me mm -hmm. within the genre yeah but but i want something different to give i don't want to read somebody that that could be too much of a lisa jackson if that makes any sense but anyway yeah absolutely and anything that's uh anything that's on the new york times or the bestseller list for a long time like when the crawdads sing mm -hmm. that would not have been a title that would have grabbed me mm -hmm. But wow, wow, wow. And I really enjoyed the book. I mean, but usually that's what happens. If enough people like it for a long time, I'm, I'm going to read it because I'm going to, there's something about it that is uh, somewhat universal. Right. Um, that's great. That actually, we did have a reader that was curious if there are any genres that you like to read for fun outside of writing. So, you know, you mentioned that you don't, you do read mysteries, but you try to steer away from people who are a little too in your lane, which is understandable. Right. I, I, I do. And I've been reading a lot. I do a lot of listening in the car and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, Australian and British writers, really good stuff, but yeah. a little different than me, mainly because of the setting, the, mm -hmm. the, the nuances. Um, and uh, uh, then I get on, I read... 
it's the guy's name, John Hart, several of his, I thought they were very good. Little more brutal than I like, but pretty good, really good. Well, he won two, he won almost back to back Edgar's and I thought, well, right. he's got something and I enjoyed those books. So yeah, I do a lot of um, listening. As I've gotten older and I spend so much time on the computer, I, I like to listen to books, especially if I'm driving. I, that's really interesting. I don't think I've ever asked one of our visiting authors what type of reading they like to do, whether it's, you know, physical books, digital e-readers or audio books. I'm definitely a huge mix of the three. I think I think recently I've been really into digital just because I can read it on my phone in between meetings, on the go, in the car when I'm not driving, obviously. But I do also love a good audiobook. So it's very interesting that you're also a huge audiobook person. I'm a huge audio fan. And only thing that really turns me off is if I can't, if I don't like the person's voice who's the actor. Yeah. That's only yeah. happened a couple times where I have to think, get past that, get past that. Most of them there are very, very good in there. Right. They read it with such... Uh, as if they're acting out the parts, it's wonderful. Right. So, yeah. No, okay. definitely. Middlesex, I listened to Middlesex years ago and whoever was the reader, whenever they were in a different voice, you you knew exactly, they didn't have to say who it was, man, woman, old, young, they were wonderful. So anyway, okay. that mainly I do that. And my sister Nancy is a, is a digital book. She's always got her Kindle right at her side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy and I are alike in that way. <laughs> um, all right, so next reader question. And, and I am curious about this. Do you have any hobbies outside of, you know, reading when you're not writing? I know Nancy mentioned last week that you guys do puzzles when you're in the process of writing. But do you have any other hobbies that you like to do? We do jigsaw puzzles and we do crossword puzzles and she does Sudoku. I do not do Sudoku unless it's the first day of the week, the real easy one. Uh -huh. um, and then we both walk. Um, I walk my dog. I've got a dog. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of dog stuff. And uh, other than that, we kind of hang out with kids, grandkids, grandkids are still young. So that's a big deal right now. Um, right. But I don't sew. I don't garden. I mean, I go out and water my plants and yeah, I do a little deadheading and every once in a while I think I, I should plant something. But, you know, I, I don't have any serious hobbies other than that, I guess, those mm -hmm. things. Well, I think you've got a pretty busy life regardless. So I, I think those are good hobbies to have. Um, Lately, I've been mopping my floor and I don't like that at all. I've had a so lot of sad. That, that's more of a chore than a hobby. <laughs> I had a lot of people here. I was mopping the floor. I thought, I think I mopped the floor more this week than I've mopped in a year. So does that count? No. But I was really yeah. glad when it was done. I was going to say, I, would, I wouldn't count that. That That's more of a chore. So we're, we're not going to include that. Years ago, I did crochet. I did, uh, mm -hmm. what's that called? Cruel, cruel embroidery, not crochet. Mm -hmm. And I did needlework. But, you know, that's been not since I've, not since I had children and they're 45 and 42. So no, so no, so I guess been, not. It's been a little while. Yeah. Uh, but I love that you like to go on walks. I imagine that like going on a walk probably helps with writer's block sometimes too, because it gets you out of your head a little bit. Yeah. Whenever I'm, I'm really messed up in my head, I do a walk. Well, I walk every mm -hmm. day because of the dog. I mean, if I don't have right. the dog, I'm less inclined. And right. most of the year, if it's not horrible weather and in Oregon, it can be horrible. I guess everywhere it can be horrible. Um, we can go out and I have a beach house. So the family has a beach house so we can walk on the beach. And I find that very calming, be not just the ocean, which is fabulous, but the weather changes, the um, landscape changes. It's, it's very, it, I don't listen to a book. I just walk. I just go with the dog and we go and I don't, I kind of want to be alone. I don't really want to walk with anybody. Right. Um, yeah. And it, it does sort a lot of things either book wise or personal wise, you know, right. everybody's got 
their own problems that they have to solve. And a lot of times if you just go out and walk, you, you can untwist your mind. Be out that, in nature. And yeah, I'm lucky that to sounds be in so nature. peaceful. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not that crazy about walking in the city, but I, I mean, I, I live in uh, suburbia and we walk right. there. But when I'm at the beach, that's really great. Yeah, I can imagine. So I, you've got me jealous and thinking, all right, I got to go find a beach house up, up where you are, because that sounds real nice right about now. <laughs> it's been really great lately, and it's been so hot everywhere else. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, one reader is wondering, and I'm glad they asked it, because I want to make sure I asked it as well. So we talked with Nancy quite a bit last week about what it was like for her to work with you on collaborative projects and what that was like to work with her sister. So what is it like for you to work what with your she sister? <laughs> she was very complimentary. She she was very nice about it. <laughs> Did she tell you about the w one good brain, one bad brain? No. <laughs> when we do crossword puzzles, when we write books, we always say we've got one between us, one really good brain, <laughs> and one really bad brain. We complement each other, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a detail person, uh, you know, checkbook to the penny. Right. Uh, just She's just a detail person. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. And I'm kind of a big person, big picture person. So sometimes the details let I let slide, and sometimes the big picture she loses. So it's a, it's a it's a good thing we in all the books we've written, and I don't know how many together we we, we read each other's work anyway. But the mm -hmm. ones that we've co-authored, I think we've maybe had two arguments. So it, it works out pretty Not well. Bad. No, no, because uh, geez, I think that we've written about ten together or. So say you at least in the double low double digits, if not high double digits. Yeah, with close to it. Any, anyway, yeah. so that's and it's been a lot of years, and we we don't fight mm -hmm. very much. So that's really good. I'm curious, what was your initial feeling when she first said we should be writers? Like we should do this. What it, what were you feeling in that moment? Well, she said we should write romance novels. Right. And I said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> That's crazy. We've never even read one. But she, well, she's a dog with a bone anyway, but right. she left. We had this big talk and we talked. We kind of came up with an idea with a third woman, a friend. And she, I, she, she dropped her daughter off because I was babysitting at the time. And I looked around at all these toddlers and I thought, well, what have you got to lose? Mm -hmm. So I pulled out the manual typewriter and some paper that looked kind of like uh, Roman meal bread. My great grandmother was big on Roman meal bread, brown bread with speckles in it. Mm -hmm. That was uh, at the time recycled paper. And I typed seven pages with those little kids running around. I gave everybody a bottle. And when Nancy came, I gave her her daughter, the diaper bag and the seven pages, first seven pages of Stormy <laughs> And that book never saw the light of day, but it got us connections. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what happened to it, but we did write the full book, three different people writing it, uh, broken down by chapters um, on a typewriter. In the end, Nancy retyped it all so it would look like mm -hmm. one person. And right. So, uh, yeah. And after that, I think she sold her next book. And it took me another half year to sell. She sold a mm -hmm. teen romance and I sold an adult expanded romance. We we were dogged and we were smart. We read, right. read everything we could at the time. There was no internet. So you had to check things out. Mm -hmm. But um, And we got lucky. It was a good time for it. You know, right. they say timing is everything. And so it worked out. Yeah, I I really loved, you know, when she told the story, it was we, we just had this idea in this conversation. And then the next day, Lisa had the start of it already written. And I, I really love that, you know, you guys had this idea together, and then you just went for it, and you trusted each other to do it. So that's a really strong bond between sisters. 
Well, and I don't know what my, well, that's my first, my first answer is always no. I always have to be talking to stuff. So, <laughs> and she's always gun, gun ho. So, okay. I mean, that's a good balance to have between the pair of you. I guess so. Yeah. It, it, it works out. What can I say? I, I don't know anybody who's worked with a sister as long as I've worked with Nancy and still no. get along and we still hang out, you know? I was about to say, I think the fact that you guys are still so close and not at each other's throats is really incredible. Yeah, we don't have any other siblings. And uh, so we've had to deal with raising our children and our mm -hmm. aging parents as together. So right. that, that helped. Yeah. We always I, said, where's that brother? And then we think, nah, we don't want him. Yeah, no, as someone with a little brother, you don't want one. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. not that helpful. Um, well, we're right at the end of our <clears throat> end of our half hour, but I want to ask one last question. Sure, shoot. Because you've had such a long and amazing career as a mystery writer, as a suspense writer, and you know, you did kind of start off in this romance arena a little bit before you shifted over. What is it about mystery and suspense? that makes you so happy as a writer? What is it that draws you to that genre? The puzzle. Mm -hmm. We love puzzles. We love putting stuff together, figuring mm -hmm. stuff out. I'm sure that's what it is. I mean, it's not the gore, it's not the love story. It, mm -hmm. The characters, yeah, but it's, it's the puzzle. For me, mm -hmm. it's the puzzle. Right. I mean, when I read a book, and if it's not one of those that's just laid right out in front of you, I'm always trying to figure out, well, Who's this guy? What did he do? What's his motivation? Ooh, there's a scary character lurking in the shadows. I mean, I just, I like to figure it out. Mm -hmm. there, right. But um, so I, I think it's the puzzle. And as a writer, mm -hmm. I like to play the puzzle with the reader. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm yeah. thinking we've always liked, we've always liked puzzles. We've always liked games. We've all board games, whatever kind of games that we just, it's a it's a, a curiosity, I guess. Um, and when we were writing for Silhouette, we were told mm -hmm. no suspense, no gunplay, none of that. And so right. we try to sneak a little bit in <laughs> here and there and because we couldn't do it otherwise, because that, right. that it wasn't as exciting or intriguing for us. Right. For me at least. I think mm -hmm. Nancy too. So I think that's, that's perfect. That I, I can definitely see why puzzles would be the big draw. Um, so that's who a great did, answer. Who done it? Why done it? When done it? All those things. I always want to know the why. I, I, I feel like for me as a mystery reader, it's always a little bit less about the who and more about the why. Why did you go to that place? What did it for you? So right. I, I do love that part of things. Um, well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining our book club and readers. Thank you for tuning in. I was watching the conversation happening while we were chatting. You guys were great. Your questions were great. So thank you for joining us and please everyone stay tuned. We're going to have many author Q and A's happening this month. Those announcements will be going up over the next few days. So stay tuned because there are going to be some fun ones coming up. Um, Lisa, thank you again so much. And everyone have a great rest of your evening. Well, thank you for having me. And yeah, now you can go back to your real lives. Now you? everyone can go back to their days and make sure you read The Girl Who Survived and stay tuned for more Lisa Jackson books coming soon. Good night, everyone. <laughs>